Welcome back, friends, to Preservation Travels with Lane and Kevin. We have traveled 11 hours to feature this home for you. Now, I have always said that if I had this much money to spend on a home, it would be on a chateau in France. But I have discovered today that this home, known as Cloisters Garth, would be the exception to my long-standing rule. This home is possibly the most magnificent example of neoclassical architecture that I have had the privilege of touring. And the reason for that is because it is completely intact. No one has come in and remodeled this property. So all of the elements remain from its 1890 build date. I'm standing in the Port Cochere and around me you'll see just the beginning of the beautiful elements of this incredible home. This is a home that you could honestly imagine Jay Gatsby rolling up into at any minute. No space has been spared. Exquisite detail here in this neoclassical beauty. You'll see these tapered ionic columns topped with egg and dart design. The architrave and entablature have beautiful raised swag and bow detail with dental molding on the interior, letting guests know who arrive that they are arriving at an exquisitely designed home. So let's take some time and enjoy the beauty of Cloisters Garth. Welcome in to Cloisters Garth. Now this is the receiving room and I don't know about you, but I don't know that I've ever seen a more magnificent private residence receiving room. You'll see underfoot, exquisitely beautiful designed parquet floors which are different in every single room of the main floor. Around the perimeter of the room, we have raised panel bishop's board, and I absolutely love this raised panel detail with dental moldings under this bench seat. I can only imagine guests being ushered in and asked to wait for the lady of the house in this space. Restoration has begun on this house. It has a long way to go, but much of your work has been started for you. In here, we see that our plaster coved moldings have been restored already. And you have the exquisite egg and dart detail has been completely repaired. So an incredible space to make a first impression in this unbelievable home. Let's go through the dining room. I know I say this a lot, that this is a room that dreams are made of. But this dining room is a room that dreams are made of. Are you ready to see the most beautifully intact 1890s neoclassical dining room ever? Come on in. Where do I even begin? Truly, literally, where does one even start describing the architectural elements of this room that make it special? They're almost too numerous to count. So I'll start in the most logical place, the floor, and work my way up. These beautiful parquet inlaid floors are absolutely stunning. And here, hidden in the panel walls, is the doorway to the kitchen. I love that. You'll notice elements that we had outside mirrored here in this room. Each of these columns is an ionic column, again, with beautifully detailed capitals. We have the Greek key design and the woodwork that we saw in the tile work of the front porch. Uh, somewhere in here, I saw egg and dart. Ah, <laughs> in the cornice, we have the egg and dart repeated. So we have many, many, many of these popular themes repeating in this room, pulling this enormous home together. I absolutely love these leaded glass china cabinets that are on both walls of this beautiful space. We have art glass, original art glass and brass light fixtures in this space. These light fixtures alone may be worth the purchase price of the house. Who knows? I'd love to get an appraiser in here. We have this amazing brass original hardware on these windows and gorgeous dogwood art glass above for the transoms. There is no way to adequately describe for you the beauty of this room. 
And now, onto the sunroom. I keep saying that every room in this house is my favorite, but this is high on the list. The restoration in this room has been completed, so we are very lucky to be able to show you what a 19th century sunroom should look like in a magnificent home such as this. So take a look around and let's look at the architectural elements that make this room so spectacular. First of all, one of the things that I think is so indicative of the period and so beautiful in this home is this treliage effect on the walls that is mimicked here over the windows. I absolutely love that. It's typically a French design element, but it's been incorporated here absolutely stunningly beautifully. The original owner of this home was a great collector of Italian tiles, and she would actually travel to Italy and have crates of Italian tile shipped over to use in the construction of this home and its gardens. We have some spectacular tiles to show you outside. But for right now, inside our treliage design, you see incorporated these beautiful Italian tiles depicting iris. Now under our feet, we have what I suspect are either Batchelder or Rookwood tiles in that true 1890s style. Absolutely exquisite detailing on the floor. And once again, we have a drain in the floor like we saw in an earlier neoclassical style. So I wouldn't doubt it at all if originally there wasn't a water feature in this spectacular room. On this side of the room, we can see these incredible original windows with the Oriole above that do still function. These windows are an absolute treasure. Looking out onto palm trees, how wonderful that we're far enough south that we have mature palms surrounding this beautiful sunroom. And over here, we have an original built-in window box lined in copper, absolutely exquisite, and seating as well to enjoy the view of your beautiful, expansive three acres of manicured gardens. Let's have a look at the ladies' parlor. Come on in. Here we are in the formal parlor. And as you can see, it's a double parlor. We have two matching beautiful mantles with overmantel. Again, we see repeated themes in this room with the egg and dart inside that beautiful coved cornice molding. We have another exquisite parquet floor underfoot, pocket doors all around us, and access onto our incredible sunroom. Eventually, the view out this front window will be of magnificent manicured lawns and gardens. It just needs you to do the trick. This space would be absolutely incredible for entertaining. Can't you just imagine large parties, dances, formal events being held in this room 100 plus years ago? This space has also undergone a massive amount of restoration already. The walls, the plaster work, the electrical, and the windows have all been restored in this part of the house. It really just needs someone to touch up the floors. You're halfway there or more with this beautiful space. This room gives us a wonderful example of what this home will look like fully restored. The last member of the family who lived here up until 2015 had just completed a complete restoration of this space before moving out and deciding to sell the home. So let's take a look around and see some of the elements that make this beautiful room so exquisite. Starting with, of course, the beautiful hardwood paneling that has been stripped of all of its old finishes and refinished all around the room. I think it gives this room a very masculine feel along with the stones around to the fireplace. So I feel like this would have been a study, a gentleman's study, maybe a smoking parlor, a gentleman's parlor. I'm not quite sure, but I think it feels very manly. Some of the things that are hidden in this room that are so much fun. At each window, we have these little hidden cubbies. There's one on either side of all of the windows in this room. And then on this side, we have a built-in hidden cubby in here. I love it. These are the little quixotic things in these houses that are so fun. The floors, you can see what these parquet floors will look like when they're completely refinished because this room, they're done. We have original brass light fixtures, sconces on the walls. The drywall has been repaired. The plaster crown is like new. This room is ready for you to enjoy in the fireplace now it looks like the fire surround still needs some repair work with the tile but the rookwood tiles are sitting right in there waiting to be placed so if you needed something in this room to feel like you'd put your finishing touches on it you can put those tiles in and say that you restored this room 
Well, here we are in another almost undescribably beautiful room. I don't know that the video is going to be able to capture the exquisiteness of the detail in this space, but we're going to try. Here we are in the library. As you can see, the room is flanked by leaded glass bookcases and again, raised panel paneling all the way around a beautiful coffered timbered ceiling. And once again, we have an original fireplace mantle with the ionic columns and egg and dart molding pulling back in to continue our theme. Another unbelievably beautiful parquet floor and French doors exiting out onto another beautiful porch. I don't know about you, but I can certainly imagine with these bookshelves filled with books, spending hours curled up on one of these window seats, which do open by the way, and reading the day away. Well, if any of you are looking for inspiration on what an early uh, 20th century, late 19th century kitchen should look like, here it is. I don't think this one's been touched again since this house was built in 1890 and it retains this to die for pedestaled double drain board farm style sink and it's beautiful built in cabinetry. It still has hooks for the teacups. Now this was never meant to be a public space. Our living styles have changed incredibly over the last 130 years, I guess at this point. The kitchen was a private space that guests and family members would never have accessed. And so the finishes in this room are far simpler. But I do wanna point out that even in this simple private space meant to be seen only by servants, we have the dental mold running across the top of the cabinets to pull the theme from the formal parts of the house into this, what was meant to be unseen, very informal part of the home. Leading from the kitchen to the stairway, there's a powder room and an original storage cupboard. Now, join me upstairs for a look at the family's private spaces. Here we have the common space for the second floor. It is a beautiful, open, bright, airy space, unusual for this period home. One of the things that I absolutely love about it are the jib doors that are located all around this space. They're made so that you could open the window, swing out the bottom part of the wall, and walk out onto what was once a second story balcony. And I absolutely love that feature. There's bookcases to hold your favorite novels for reading and a wonderful shared space to spend some time on cold winter nights when you need the heat that's rising up that stairway. Upstairs we have six bedrooms. All of them are similar in proportion. They're about 18 by 18. They have 13 foot ceilings, eight foot doors that access either the central landing or connecting bedroom, all of their original brass hardware. Each room has a fireplace with, with its original tile surround and we have three completely original bathrooms up here. There are also a number of jib doors in each of the bedrooms that look out onto or walk out onto balconies or give beautiful views of these incredible grounds. So instead of taking you room by room and repeating a lot of the same information, we're just gonna give you a walkthrough of each of these incredible spaces.
This room is the room that I saw and realized I had to drive 11 hours to show you this home because of the thing behind me. This is probably my only chance ever to stand inside an original Victorian rib cage shower. This shower alone is worth probably $5,000, maybe more than that, who knows? Look at this, it is a thing of beauty. We also have the original hex tile floors and a fleur-de-lis pattern, an original soaking tub. This thing is like four feet deep, it's unbelievable. You've got your subway tiles, original. I know you guys love it when I repeat that word, but it's worth repeating. And even the commode that's been here from the beginning. Do you think they'd leave the scale for me too? I bet they would. And the ceilings are coved. I love that. This room is museum worthy. And even better, it's right off one of the bedrooms and it's the bedroom that has the walkout sleeping porch through the jib doors. It's perfection. Now, make sure you stay with us until the end because we're going to take you downstairs after we show you all the bedrooms upstairs and show you an amazing bedroom that has an incredible history because it once hosted a very important guest. Now, technically there are seven bedrooms upstairs. We've shown you six, but this one is detached off of the bathroom that we showed you. This was originally the maid's quarters that could access the bathroom at any time to draw a bath for the lady who needed one. But this bedroom is quite large and it has its own original bathroom. So an amazing space if you're a teenager and want space of your own. Well, here we are in the servant stairs. We're gonna take you upstairs for a quick peek of the attic and then we're gonna go downstairs to show you that very special bedroom we talked about. So. Come on and have a look at the attic. So here we are in that very special eighth bedroom that we told you about. It's very detached from the rest of the house, enters privately off the back porch um, with views of the grounds, very secluded. Why? Because it was added on for President Taft to come and use at his leisure when he needed some downtime. We're about to go take a look at the amazing grounds, but before we do, I wanna show you something that really harkens to this incredible transitionary period in American architecture. Remember, we're at 1890. We're right in the middle of the Victorian period, and in some areas of the country, we're still at the height of the Queen Anne Victorian exuberant style of architecture. We're still, some areas of the country are still in the flush of the aesthetic movement, depending upon where you are. And here on the back porch, we see a little hint of this. The stick and ball detailing on this back porch doesn't go with the neoclassical revival home at all. This goes on a Queen Anne style Victorian home, but because of the era this home was built, this was still very much in trend. There's also some carving in that beautiful detail work in the dining room that has a very aesthetic period feel right in the middle of a bunch of neoclassical revival design. So this house shows us transition in architectural trends across the United States encapsulated beautifully. Now let's take a look at these grounds.
Imagine these beautiful grounds return to their manicured state. I certainly can. And once they are, this incredible three and a half acres can host amazing public and private events. I know if I was a young lady getting married today, this is where I'd wanna have my wedding. So that's the end of our tour for today. I think we've shown you all we can show you and all you have the patience to watch in this YouTube video. But for more information, make sure you reach out to Ross Trulock at the number on your screen. 7,600 square foot home on three and a half acres in the middle of Augusta's most prestigious neighborhood. Not only that, it is almost completely intact from its 1890 build period. Augusta is the home of the Masters Golf Tournament, which happens every year in spring. So this beautiful home can serve as a boutique inn for guests during that time and earn you probably your year's worth of mortgage payments should you need one in one single week. So how much is this home on the market for? It is by far the most expensive property that we've offered to date, but is it worth every penny? We certainly think so. This three and a half acre, 7,600 square foot, 1890s masterpiece is on the market for $1.45 million. If this is the home for you, if you're looking to flee the big city and find some serenity in a tranquil setting, still in a small town, but with all the amenities you need, Augusta, Georgia, and this beautiful home might be just the place you're seeking. Again, reach out to Ross, at the number on the screen and make your offer. We don't think it'll last long.